I'm going to compare these five Wi-Fi 7 mesh systems by ASUS from least expensive to most expensive. I've done a bunch of speed test range tests on them, have all those numbers right here. We'll go over all of that. And I happen to test with these following Wi-Fi 7 devices. And I should mention, if you happen to have the iPhone 17 Pro Max or Pixel 10 Pro XL, these can't go quite as fast as the other two, so I like to test with the faster devices. And it has nothing to do with the routers. It really has to do uh, with the phones. I've done a separate video on them. Okay, so what is the point of a mesh system? Well, a mesh system is when you have two or more devices that work together to increase your Wi-Fi coverage. So if you, let's say you have really good speeds on one side of your house, things just play fast, the websites just load fast, gaming, everything's good, you have low ping and stuff, and then you get to the other side of your house and things are just not as fast, things are lagging, and you know things sometimes it's buffering sometimes it's not sometimes it disconnects because that signal is really just having trouble going there well the point of a mesh system is you can have more than one and they work together to increase your wi-fi coverage you can even get a three pack if you wanted to you can get four or five depending on the size of your house i mean there is a finite limit up to a certain point but usually up to even five or six you should be okay granted most cases two or three should be more than golden in most cases i would think depending again on the size of your house but basically and one other thing i should mention is that if you have let's say if you have two of these let's say you connect to one and then the other one well when you're walking throughout your house it automatically switches you to the one with the best signal so if you're closer to this one i'll switch you here if you're closer to this one, I'll switch you here. There's nothing you need to do on your phone. You don't need to go and connect to a different one. It's none of that. It's, it's all seamless, basically. It's all automatic to the point that even if you're doing something, it shouldn't even lag, um, assuming your internet speeds are fast enough. I wanted to mention that all of these units happen to be routers. So this is physically a router and so is this. In fact, these two are identical with each other. So I'm just gonna show you guys one of them. And I should mention that if this is the one that you hook up to your modem, then this acts as the router and this one acts as an access point. So it's automatically configured by the ASUS router app. So there's nothing you need to do. So, and usually if you get a two pack or a three pack, it, one of them has a sticker that says basically it's the main unit. So you could start with that one. Okay, so we have some vents all along the side, same, similar, very similar design to the other ones. We have two 2.5 gigabit ports. We have the power, we have the power on and off, and we have the reset right here and the WPS button. I should have mentioned there's an LED in the front as well. Moving on to the BT6, we have the LED on the bottom. We have vents along the sides. In fact, they're bigger vents. We have the reset button, WPS button. And then we have a USB 3.0, which means you can share an external hard drive on your network if you wanted to. Don't expect it to be crazy fast or anything, but it could be done. We have three gigabit ports. We have a 2.5 gigabit port for your WAN. And then we have the power port, and then we have the off and on right here. We also have some vents right here as well. Moving on to the BT-8, it's very similar in terms of size and shape to the BT-6. However, I mean, we still have the USB, but we have now another 2.5 gigabit port. So these two happen to be 2.5 gigabits, and these two are gigabit ports. Again, power, power on and off. And on the bottom, we have the similar reset and the factory reset. Moving on to the BT-10, it's basically the same size and shape as the BT-6 and 8. However, the difference is the port. So we have the same USB 3.0, we have a gigabit port, and we have two 10 gigabit ports, and that's what makes this one amazing. We have the power, power on and off, and the same WPS and reset on the bottom. And finally, we have the BQ-16 Pro. It is larger in size, similar shape though. So vents along the sides. We also have a bunch of vents in the back, and we have that cool little 7. So at certain angles, you guys could see the 7. So it says 7 right there, and it says Wi-Fi right here, which actually looks really cool. And we have the same USB 3.0. We have gigabit ports here. We have a 10 gigabit port here. We have a gigabit here, and we have a 10 gig here. So we have two 10 gig ports on this one as well, with the rest of them being gigabit. We have the power. We have the power on and off, and we have a very similar WPS and reset on the bottom. And these are the respective power supplies. We're going to start off with the internet speed test. As you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds unless, of course, the router itself can't go that fast. So in my case, my internet speeds happen to be 5 gigs up and down, and 3 of these can't make it to those speeds. Only the BT-10 and the BQ-16 Pro can actually give me up to those 5 gig speeds. 
these would be capping my speeds depending on which one it is. The BD4 on Ethernet, I'd be capped to 2.5. The BT6, I would actually be capped to gigabit. And the reason for that is because I only have one 2.5 gigabit port on this. So as soon as it comes out, it would come out at gigabit speeds. And then the BT8, I would also be capped to 2.5. Whereas these two, I can get my full five gigs. Now the Wi-Fi results are a different story. So looking at the results here, we could see that the BD4 doesn't have the strongest Wi-Fi signal because it is a dual band system and it doesn't have a fast speed rating. So looking at the internet speed test, we got just above 1.2 and just under gigabit speeds for the upload. Whereas as we move up to the right, we actually get faster and faster. So the BT6, we're almost around, you know, we are at 1.9 for the down, uh, a little above basically 2.1 for the up. And then as we get to the BT8, we're getting closer to those 2.5 gigabit speeds, both for the download, not quite for the upload, but getting there. The download on the BT10 is just next level fast and the upload wasn't quite as fast and the same is true for the BQ16 so very fast on the download but not quite as fast on the upload and the reason for this is it actually really matters what server you connect to and what time of day you're testing it because it can actually vary quite a bit depending on the internet speed test so this is why I like to do local speed tests because the tests are much more consistent. So what I do is I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. And in the case of wired and wireless backhaul, I go from the Wi-Fi device to the secondary one, which then jumps to the primary one, which then goes to the server. And this way I'm not relying on my ISP, my internet service provider, nor the public speed test server, giving me much more consistent results. So looking at these speeds, we can see a, an improvement across the board, except for the BT6. And the reason for the BT6 is we only have one 2.5 gigabit port. So, so the server, my computer acting as a server is actually connected to the gigabit port. So it can't go faster than gigabit speed. So that's why you're seeing that, why the BT6 is actually slower than the BD4 in the case of the single router configuration. But the BT8 is just under 2.5. The BT10 is flying at 3.7 down and 3.8 up. And BQ16 Pro is just somewhere else at 4.1 down and four, a little above 4.1 up, basically. So BQ16 Pro definitely took the cake, but the BT10 was actually not too far behind for something that cost less than the BQ16 Pro. Then we move on to wired backhaul and very similar numbers to the single router configuration and again depends on the ports. Moving on to wireless backhaul and this is where you could see a drastic difference in terms of performance and this is why it's starting to make sense why some cost more than the others because the speed rating is playing a very important role. So the BD4 is just very very last place in terms of wireless backhaul. BT6 is normal, so just under gig speeds, just like it's wired backhaul numbers. BT8 is almost 1.8 down with 1.2 up, so getting some solid numbers out of that. And then another step up with the BT10 with almost 2 gigs down and 1.8 up. And then we get to the BQ16 Pro, and this guy's just leading the charge with above 2.6 down and above 2.7 up. So just phenomenal, phenomenal numbers. And this is where you get to see that quad band makes a difference the speed rating makes a difference that's why you're getting amazing wireless backhaul speeds and in case you guys are wondering even though this access point is in wireless backhaul this basically being the main router hooked up to your modem this one being in wireless backhaul so wirelessly talking to the main one you can use the ethernet ports on the secondary one and in fact if your hardware is fast enough if your internet speeds are fast enough you can actually get even faster speeds on ethernet even though this is still wirelessly talking to this one, and on some of these, I have done a video where I actually demo that, and you guys can actually see the numbers as I'm running them. It's, it's very cool. Uh, I'll just say that, especially with the, the beefier ones, like the BT10, BQ16 Pro. It's, it's very impressive. Okay, now we jump into range test. Now, range will vary drastically by location. Essentially, the more obstructions you have, Typically, the less range you're going to get. So in my place, all of these are tested in the same exact environments. And at 20 feet away inside my place, we did get a drop all across the board. 
except with the really the BT6. And again, the reason why the BT6 isn't dropping is because the Wi-Fi on it is actually very strong. It just so happens that the gigabit port is really limiting this router quite a bit. BT8 was a drop, but still getting some good numbers. BT10 is just flying. And in fact, it's even doing better than the BQ16 Pro in terms of the 20 feet distance. And then at 50 feet, this is when I'm outside my place, all getting very usable numbers. Again, it's starting to drop, especially in the upload sections. And we BT6 is very close. Again, it's really because of this port limitation on the BT6 because the Wi-Fi on it is actually very, very strong. BT8 is dropping, again, especially in the upload. BT10 is still doing very, very well, as well as the BQ16 Pro. And then we get to 100 feet, and this is when I'm actually across the street, and this is where I cap my testing. They can actually go even further than this, but I just stop my testing after that. BD4 being essentially in last place in terms of the download speeds. Uh, BT6 actually still, there is a drop now, but still doing fairly well. Mostly in the upload section was a drop. The same is true for the BT8, mostly in the upload section, but still a drop across the board. And the fact is that the BT10 is doing very well, but the most impressive is the BQ16 Pro at across the street. I'm getting one point above 1.5 down and above 800 up is just insane. It's really a beast of a mesh system. Next, we get to set up a configuration for this used Asus router app for any of these. And the interface is basically almost the same for them, except the ones that have the six gigahertz band. There's a few other options for some of those, but mainly the same options, even for the least expensive one, which is pretty impressive. And the cool thing about Asus is it gives you a lot of free stuff included, I should say, in the price. You get AI protection included in the price, it supports AI mesh, which means you can even combo these with each other if you wanted to. It does support multiple SSIDs, which I'll touch on. And it also supports parental controls as well. So all included in the price, which is fantastic. So as you're setting up with the Asus router app, it tells you to pick a Wi-Fi 7, your main Wi-Fi name, your SSID and a password. And then it automatically makes an Internet of Things Wi-Fi name and password. So what I like to do is I like to make that the main one just for Wi-Fi 7 devices, just for my fast stuff like, like these devices. And then when, when that's all done, I like to make a guest network. And with the guest network, I basically give that access to my internet. So it's a guest network, but it's kind of really not a guest network because you have access to all my stuff anyways. So it's kind of like a pseudo guest network, but it's actually really part of the real network. And most of my devices just connect to that because some of my devices have trouble connecting to the main SSID when I enable the Wi-Fi 7 option. So that's why I make a separate one for that so my devices could connect to that and there's no issues connecting to that. And then I make another guest network which is just for guests that does not have access to my intranet. And, and that basically means they don't have the access to any of my devices on the network. That just means they have access to the internet alone. Okay, and then the cool thing about ASUS, and you get that even with the BD4, which is fantastic by the way, is they give you a kid's SSID if you want one. So you can make a kid's Wi-Fi name and password. You can have your kid's devices connect to that. And you can actually set time limits on that which is awesome. So let's say if bedtime was at, I don't know, nine o'clock, you could just have Wi-Fi go off at that time, which is actually kind of cool. And then you can even make a VPN Wi-Fi where you can have your own setup for your own VPN that you're using and you can set it up with ASUS and basically connect to that SSID. And then by connecting to that, you go through a VPN automatically. You can make a separate MLO uh, multi-link operation Wi-Fi SSID, you can do that as well. So there's basically a decent number of, op well, more than a decent, there's actually a lot of options with ASUS. And then again, you get parental controls included in the price, so you could block some websites, you could block some categories, you could set time limits, again, all included in the price. You don't have to pay anything extra for this. And then it offers AI protection, again, extra security stuff that, again, is included in the price which is fantastic. And then 
Aside from that, there's a whole lot more options if you go to, in, even in the app, there's a lot of options, but if you go to the web interface, there's even more options there that you could really, really customize a whole lot more. You could change the transmit power on specific bands if you wanted to. There's just so much customization. It's Asus is just the best when it comes to that. Before I pick my favorite in terms of price per performance, and by the way, which one do you guys think I'm gonna pick for that? Let me know in the comment sections below. So I did wanna say all of these are good for certain situations. It just depends on what situation you're looking for. So we'll start off with the BD4. It's really good for wired speeds up, basically up to gigabit. If you're running wired backhaul, it's very good for that. If you're running wireless backhaul, not so good. Now you can even get it for up to 2.5 gigabit speeds, but I would recommend it for that if most of your devices are wired because the Wi-Fi performance on this thing is not that great once we start exceeding gigabit speeds. I mean, it can still do a decent amount, but after that certain point, it's not as good. The BT6 is very good for internet speeds of up to gigabit. Wired or wireless doesn't matter. It's just phenomenal. It's really the gigabit port limitation that's really limiting this thing because the speed rating is actually very, very fast. So if you have a lot of Wi-Fi devices for up to gigabit speeds, BT6 is definitely the winner there. The BT8 is even really good for up to 2.5 gigabit speeds because you have two 2.5 gigabit ports. You also have a faster speed rating, so you have faster wireless backhaul as well. So an overall really, really good for up to 2.5 gigabit speeds, wired or even wireless backhaul. Wireless backhaul is not as fast as the BT10, but still some solid numbers for up to 2.5 gigabit speeds. Then we move on to the BT10, and this thing is an absolute beast because it can handle internet speeds of up to 10 gigabits. You have two 10 gigabit ports, so there's no speed loss for ethernet connected devices. And in addition, wired or wireless, you're getting some solid performance. So even the wireless, you're just under two gigs for the down and 1.8 up. So still got some solid, solid numbers and the range and everything, just a phenomenal overall router. Then we get to the BQ16 Pro, and this is really the king when it comes to the speeds uh, in terms of just single router. The wireless backhaul is just next level fast. The range test also did really, really well. So just an overall really, really good router. So if you're looking kind of for like the best of the best in terms of, especially for wireless backhaul performance, this is the way to go. But if you were actually doing wired backhaul for up to 10 gig speeds, I would still probably save some money. You could still get the BQ16 Pro, it's still amazing. It is better than the BT10 overall, but the BT10 for the price, this is actually my favorite one. So the BT10 is my favorite one because price per performance, it's phenomenal. You're getting really, uh, it's not too far behind the BQ16 Pro. It's really only the wireless backhaul that it is kind of far behind and it really just depends on your speed rating, I mean your internet speeds as well. So it just depends what you're looking for, but as an all-arounder, this thing's an absolute beast. But again, it depends specifically on your situation. If you have gigabit speeds, I would, I would basically consider these two. So if you have 2.5 gigabit speeds, I would consider these two. And if you have 10 gigabits up to 10, I would consider these two. So that would be the summary. And again, it depends if you're using wired or wireless backup. But with that, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash the subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.